the end of the trip was always going to be royal trim, and I didn't always expect it to get royally uh, horrid out there. These are bigger droplets. It was plenty hard, and now it's just a lot harder. Woo! Six oh nine, headed to Royal Troon, our third Royal, our third open course in three days. 199 miles. Here's our captain. Strap in, folks. Sing it, Sean. Imagine all the birdies. <laughs> Sean's guessing all the former open champs at Royal Troon. So far, he's gotten Tom Watson, Todd Hamilton, Arnold Palmer, and, and he got Stenson, but that was a given. All right, Sean, here we are in the bar at the Marine Hotel, which sits literally right on the 18th fairway at Royal Troon. Troon, the city, is, I think, a bit sleepier than the other towns we've visited. I was told that it's more of a retirement locale. Oh, guys, you get some cool animals. Oh. Oh, baby. Someone smart once told me, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. This week, we don't have that problem. <laughs> I almost just got taken out by tidal wave. We are. Is this wow. heaven? <laughs> I think so. No, it's true. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm gonna like this course more than the other two. A little better already. Oh, one of these. Three days of golf is either too much or I'm starting to think not enough. Royal Troon, the, the history feels very much like on display. The, the oldest clubhouse you could ever imagine that really hasn't changed. The clubhouse, 1887, as you can see, it's been expanded. I was going to say, it's the it's same kept, building. It's yeah. kept its uh, original features. That's it is wild. the same building. It's just been extended and mm -hmm. obviously modernized. So firstly, these are replicas, but these are the oldest set of golf clubs in the world. Oh, the amateur in 38, Charlie Yates, earns a little note, East Lake Atlanta, America's pulling hard partner, come through, signed Bob Jones. That's insane. That's pretty baller. <laughs> As the amateur of our partnership today, I hope to recreate what Charlie did. <laughs> Eric is pulling for you, brother. <laughs> The course is a very straightforward golf course. Royal Troon sometimes gets a reputation as one of the less remarkable, yeah, less exciting championship sites. And when we walked on the first tee, my thought was the opposite. There's the beach and then there's the golf course. With the wind coming off the ocean, you have to start your first and second tee shots basically over the beach, let it come back. Sean's warming up here. We're on the gorgeous first tee at Royal Troon. Alan is going to guide us around today. Um, he's been a member here for the last eight or so years. Uh, the beach is right. We thought it was going to rain. Only positive comments today. Not a single negative thought, or at least nothing negative spoken. If you do, you have to buy the other person a Guinness post round. Let's have a day. Well, so basically, keep out of the bunkers. You know, that's the... Keep it out of the bunkers. The ultimate <laughs> Scotland like advice. advice. Yeah. All right, Alan. All right. Play Cheers. Play well. Oh, that's a beaut. So good. What a beautiful tee shot. Oh, Dylan. All right. Tough to think positively about that, but yep. we will. Nice swing, Sean. Stay out of that. Be short, Just short of, it. of it. What an amazing first tee. So when the open was here, Tiff, they had like obviously stands around it. Forget how close the water is. You can hear the waves being uh, put to the test early here. But you know, 
It's a great opportunity. Really good. Stop. Pretty good. At least. All right. Made it out. We're going to make double tiff and it's not going to bother us. Nope. Darn. Oh, that really breaks. Okay. Rolling a little faster than I thought the first, the putty green. I think I would normally have cussed myself during that double bogey. Yeah, proud of you. I feel like there are more bunkers out here than there were on the other courses we've played, Dylan. The bunkers look like little landmines from the tee. They frame every tee shot. Split those, huh? Yeah, I've actually got two inside bunkers. Way out there. Yeah. It uh, adds to the excitement of your tee shot when you're watching your ball roll around, just hoping it doesn't just get sucked in by one of those the things. The excitement? More like the anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should be directly in that bunker, I think. It's actually amazing that you haven't cussed yet. What a great challenge that bunker will be. Look forward to it. It's hard to imagine missing this and that. They add temptation too, because once you're in one of those bunkers, you can usually chop it out in some direction, but it's just then how greedy you want to get that could get you in trouble or possibly lead to heroics, but mostly trouble. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think we could say holy <laughs> in a good way. Oh, Tiffany, did you see your friend to your right there? <laughs> I mean, maybe one of the best things about golf in Scotland, dogs are just everywhere. Oh, loopy. Loopy. Loopy? Dogs are better behaved than some of the members. I would think so. <laughs> I agree with that. Officially time. You can't visit Scotland and not get rained on a little bit. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, go in! Oh, you can barely even tell that it's in there. Hey, how about that, guys? That was 40. Oh my god, be amazing. Gee, Shawnee short game is just dialing in here. Yeah, very good. Nice shot. Very, very good. Something like that. Wow. Well, three, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Two nice displays of chipping there, Sean. Thanks, man. <laughs> I mean, it feels like just hidden hope to some extent with these bunkers. I mean, we showed up hoping for, for a duel, right? Stenson versus Mickelson style. It's about 50 yards right, and then went into the pot bunker on the postage stamp hole. Didn't want to swear about it, though. We also showed up hoping for just great attitudes. That was the big thing for us. I can see how if you would let this just build inside for a while, you, hypothetically, you could just lose it. Well, especially the way you're playing. Stay up. Wow, is that a good putt. <laughs> Sometimes you just need something good to happen. I felt like I held on to the positive vibes for seven holes. That way. I mean, horrible. And they got fully ejected at the postage stamp. That's the kind of hole where one bad swing can just torch everything. I actually would not mind hitting one more. Um, only for my pride. The tiniest hole, they call it, you know, the shortest par five in the world. There's a number of courses that claim that. But I proved this one to actually be true. If you look at it, like, this should be simple. Just a little wedge. Oh yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh man, it's not that hard of a shot. I think I can do something. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Could be a good game of ping pong breaking out. Ah! <laughs> oh no. If ever there was a time to just swear. That looks like a tough one to be in. Spin. Oh, sit. 
I don't know. You know how like crazy roller coasters sell t-shirts like I got sick on this ride or I feel like you guys should sell, sell t-shirts like I got stamped at the postage stamp. I would have to buy one. Oh my gosh. Am I in the other bunker? Yeah, you're in that bunker. Like we hit four tee shots, right? I hit two, you guys each hit one. You both found the green, but I missed the green on my first. And it just shows you how like, okay, if you can hit the green, you're making par. If you miss the green, you can make an eight, just like that. Oh. Nice putt. All right, we're on to the ninth hole. We're not gonna talk about this one. We got absolutely stamped right on my forehead. I failed at the postage stamp. I did not curse, but I think I, I probably said something bad in that array of eight shots. You wanna hit one or you wanna go up to the lights? Let's hit one. 473 is all. You're probably from this tee, I want to go. Okay. Straight, kind of over the middle of, of this yeah. bush, basically. That's it. I just can't get rid of that. All right, show us how it's done. Nice. That's so good. Beauty. <laughs> We've both done it. All right, Sean, let's go play the up tees where we belong. It's starting to get windy. We got into the worst conditions of our entire trip. Glad I've got this jacket because this just came out of nowhere. It's almost like hailish. Kind of some pellets, not good. Really tested out our gear. So to say, tested out our psyche, tested out our swings, our abilities. Oh baby, good thing I've got the greatest invention known to man. Best one of the day. Wow. I feel like I just, I'm at a car wash and I just went through the part where they just absolutely drench you with water. And then there's the part where they just blow all the air on you and you kind of dry out. <laughs> Even that is just 40 yards right and 40 yards short. So we played into the wind on probably 15 or so holes throughout the day, and it was brutal. It's gotten royally hard, royal true. It doesn't happen often. Yeah, but we did it. I guess it's like walking to school uphill both ways sort of thing. Oh. Gosh, is that Scotland in a golf shot right there? He's lived here a long time. Wow, look at these clouds. Get there, please. <laughs> How would you assess their playing so far? I would say coming from states, I'd give them I'd give them pass marks so far. Pass marks, alright, we'll take that. <laughs> Different? I almost missed it. <laughs> it's kinda like right in here. Wow. Oh, come on, boys. It's not that hard. It's like Stetson versus Mickelson out here. Volume two. Is it though? What Stetson and Mickelson did continues to be unfathomable, maybe. It's like it wasn't close. Like, okay, it's between you and me, buddy. We're gonna leave everybody else behind. It doesn't make sense that they could shoot 63. Of course. If you take away all the wind, if you make it a little bit soft, it rained that week. Phil shot his 63 in pretty tame conditions.
but it's not like Stenson's 63 was tame. He was making putts from 50 feet away, 60 feet away. The guys just blacked out. <laughs> yeah. we, we didn't black out. Wind, wind, wind! Oh no. Oh. But at the very least, if you don't play well, or you have a hard time, you can at least look around and be like, damn it, this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous sunset. This is cool. Such a fun way to finish. I think it's gotta be the coolest 18th hole setting that you can hit into. Yeah. Holy sh I mean, there's a room inside the clubhouse that is just separated by, you know, panes of glass, not even bulletproof glass, not golf ball proof glass. There's no view that I've seen this close to an actual finishing hole. Try and picture this view during the open. During the open, you're looking at a stadium, so you've got two massive grandstands. What a nerve wracking shot. <laughs> Is anyone inside watching that crap? Oh, Bang! Right. Oh. Guys, yeah. it was a pleasure. Thank you. Great plan. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for showing us around. Holy sorry we uh, partner. Sorry we disgraced the course in that oh. manner with our play. <laughs> Tony, hey, good job out there, pal. <laughs> Holy cow. As long as you enjoy it, as long as you're picking back up, you could. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had I had a blast, well, man. That is a it. it helps to finish like this too. The clubhouse is not that much to look at. When it gets hit by the sunset, it becomes this piece of artwork. We ended up having like a 10 minute conversation after we put it out on 18 because it was like, gosh, I kinda just wanna hang out here. I just wanna see the sun finish. Felt like we were the only people on the course. We'll be back in two years. For the open. Yeah. I'll be thinking about this trip for years to come simply because of the courses that we played and also because of the memories that we'll share. There you go. <laughs> Yesterday we played Royal Troon. The day before we played Royal Liverpool. The day before that we played Royal Portrush. Dylan, that's three Royals, three open hosts, three countries, three days, two podcasters, one hell of a trip. Trip of a lifetime. We did it. <laughs>